whoever tells you you ain't gonna take L's, run. Run the other direction because life starts with an L and it will give you them all the time, but they're lessons, right? right? So if there's something that you can take from this, like life will give you lessons, lemons, learn. Yeah. YouTube, what's going on? Jamil Damji here with my brother and friend, Vincent Clark. Been doing business with Vincent for 15 years. Real estate agent, made a relationship with back in the day um, from networking and, the, and then networking, going to see a house, grew into dozens of deals with each other, back and forth, selling houses to each other, from each other. Like it was, it's been an incredible ride. Vincent. Yes. Good to see you, bro. Oh, man. The pleasure's all mine. Uh, so, Jack. Ex explain to my audience who you are. Uh, Vincent Clark. I'm the owner and designated broker of Vincent Clark Real Estate, based here in Phoenix. Uh, do more higher-end real estate, but will really take on any client who needs help experiencing what I think they need to experience when uh, putting out probably the most amount of money they'll ever put out on anything. So we care for our clients in very, very specific and unique ways uh, all over the valley. Amazing. And I, guys, I've seen some of the projects that Vincent has worked on. And like, these are the houses that you put on your vision board. I'm no kidding, right? Uh, they're like legit the houses you put on your vision board. You're like, oh, when, I'm, when I grow up, I want to live there. And, uh, um, and that's, that's incredible. Let me, let me yeah. tell you kind of you know, what's happened here. So you remember the old spot, uh, the foot fish office that yep. kind of smelled like feet or fish, depending <laughs> on the time of day. Right. We've grown up. Yes. <laughs> that was 2,000 yeah. square feet. I think this is 25,000. Um, quite, quite a change. Quite a change here. You know, different departments. This is our boardroom where we have franchises come mm. in and different meetings mm. operating all the time. You know, not H, full HR department over here, full tech department over here. Yep. Yep. Hi, guys. Mm -hmm. um, Wow, uh, and this, this is kind of the bullpen, right? So wow, this is moving on up. Yeah, for real. Yeah, two kitchens, um, but <laughs> two kitchens. Uh, but yeah, we've got uh, some of our franchises, franchise teams operating over here. Our intake team. We've always been very good at creating and building buyers lists. Some of our um, hello, some of our acquisitions team here. A uh, couple of our franchises that are highly active working out of the office. We like to keep everybody together so we have more of a well, family feel. Sure. We can bounce ideas off yeah. each other and do more business with each yeah. other. Um, as we continue on, our act department, disposition mm -hmm. department, Ronald Carter there is a beast. Wow. Hey, man, Andy, another out? beast. Wow. With the best Thank mullet you. in town. Yeah, that's for real. And in the mustache. Town. mustache. In mustache town. to go with it. I love it. Um, and uh, uh, here we get into yeah. New Reach yeah. where uh, the education process of our, of our business yeah comes into play wow. so a lot of community support a lot of people here to help folks grow reach financial mm. freedom because mm. it's not easy no you know and there's a lot of pitfalls a lot of traps mm. and a lot of ways you can lose money both of us have lost money in life <laughs> that's for dang sure it's not a it's not always going to yeah. be an easy go guys whoever whoever tells you you ain't going to take l's run run the other direction because life starts with an l uh, and it will give you them all the time but they're lessons right. Right, so if there's something that you can take from this, like life will give you lessons, yeah. lemons, learn. Yeah. yeah, as soon as someone asks you to do something that's in one of their pitches, I've never lost money. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. That should be a red flag. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to be the first right. then, right? Because exactly. <laughs> I don't like your batting yeah. average right 100%. now. You're bound for a loss. 100%. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of want to dive into a little bit of our history, Vincent, mm -hmm. because, you know, the people that I work with, especially the ones that I teach, I have this really... Uh, different model for wholesale, mm. right? A lot of wholesaling mm -hmm. uh, education platforms teach people, you know, cold call folks, kick right. through the door, right. um, you know, create transactions, mm. create transactions. I've always been more of a relationship mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about, you know, going to Sally homeowner and being like, let's buy your house. Yeah. It's more like, hey, I'm going to know Vincent for right. 15 years right. and we're going to do dozens of deals mm. together because that mm. one phone call, you know, changes both right. of the trajectory of our businesses, right? It. Yep. And so that's important for me. It is. I think. It is. And not enough people yeah. understand no. that. So no. why don't we have a seat sure. and kind of chit chat about that process? You know how we how we've developed this relationship, how we continue to love and yeah. support each other. You know, even though it's been a minute since we've oh, worked man. together. Yeah. Well, one of the things I, I noticed, I mean, you, you've, you've touched on it a little bit already, is we both view the money that we make as natural byproducts of serving people. Absolutely. And you know, whether it's uh, an agent, a client. Uh, me interacting with a wholesaler or an investor, it's always the same focus. Right. And if you do that right, which is what I've always appreciated about you, yeah. when we first met, uh, I could tell that this wasn't just transactional for you. Right. And that laid the foundation for everything that we've done since. It's true. And it's interesting as well because there's this misconception with wholesalers, at least, that real estate agents and wholesalers are this like 
this repel, repelling sort of, you know, um, for some agents, they just get this, you know, visceral hatred towards a wholesaler. And for wholesalers, there's this visceral fear right. because of that natural, right. like, you know, um, polarity, sure. you know, and right. so, but we never have that. No. And, and so and that came from honesty, transparency, right. and then really pushing forward and doing business together. So, right. Right. Um, you know, to, to give you guys some perspective, not only have I bought wholesale deals from Vincent, mm -hmm. I've sold wholesale mm -hmm. deals to Vincent. Mm -hmm. Vincent has fixed and flipped some of the deals. He's mm -hmm. made money, lost money, mm -hmm. um, never turned around and been like, you sold me a deal, I lost money. That never happens, right? Everybody in this business is a big boy, right? Um, and has and never begrudged me on a fee or anything like that. It's always just been like, yes. Um, there's been deals that I've looked at where I'm like, I want to buy that, but I've given it to Vincent. Like the one maybe in... Um, uh, off of Campbell, I, there was a nice little modern house in the Encanto area. You still have that house? Uh, no, no, no. No, but, no. but I yeah, think I you never probably crushed it on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I never held any of those properties, but oh, yeah, we okay. got in and got out. The got in and got out. Can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's one of those people that I always called on when I needed a fast decision, yeah. right? Uh, and he called on me when he needed a fast decision. There was just going to be houses that he was just not going to touch. Mm -hmm. Some of the older, maybe far away from where he lived or right. inconvenient for him yeah. to flip. And that's a real thing, you know, there's this limiting belief in a lot of wholesalers' minds that, you know, why wouldn't the real estate agent do this themselves? Well, sometimes the real estate agent might live 45 minutes away, has that's a family and kids, right. and is not going to take, you know, the, another freeway, maybe three freeways, to go do this project, and you might be the best source of a disposition, right? Mm -hmm. So let's kind of open up the thought process, because are you still being contacted by wholesalers? Are you doing yeah. business with other yeah, wholesalers? How, how does this look? What is it? What sure. makes? What turns you on? What turns you off? Sure. Well, I've gotten out of game of flipping houses myself, so I don't do that anymore. But okay. I have several investor clients that uh, call me looking for off-market things, yep. off-market deals, which I get through a network of brokers and agents and, and clients. Um, and when those things happen, uh, honestly, my first call is to Keegley to uh, awesome. you know do uh, connect with somebody who. Uh, I can trust. I mean, right. that's really it. I've dealt with several wholesalers, and you know real fast the ones that you can trust and the ones <laughs> that you can't. And that's what I've always appreciated about you. Just, you know, we have a foundation of trust and honesty. And, How you know, do you get that? How do you get that foundation of trust and honesty? Um, well, it helps to be self-aware. When we t you talked about it earlier, I mean, yeah. I, I I don't know how much you stress that with your people, but yeah. it, even in my own world and with my kids, self-awareness is such a value that um, we really try to uh, tr to create. And with real estate, I had to be aware of what I was good at and what I'm not good at. True. And being aware of the market uh, was probably the most important because when you talk about fast decisions. Um, I have to know what's going on in a yeah. neighborhood or what's going on in the market for me to be able to rapidly process value, to understand some basic formulaic equations to know how much that uh, remodel might cost and what I can sell it for. And so some of the homes that, yeah, I know that I'm not good at are some of the older, you know, historic hundred year old, old homes that require some structural, uh, you know, integrity changes that are just over my head. I can't I don't even know how to value some of that stuff. Right. So I just stay away from it and I tell you I can't do that. Um, so that's the, one of the biggest things, just being honest with yourself, yeah. being honest with, you know, each other. And, and there might have been a value at some point. You're like, hey, I think ARV is this. And I look at it and I'm like, mm, I'm not getting that. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, yeah. And so we passed and we, right. you know, shook hands and yeah. move on. So that never really disrupted our relationship. Yeah. So that, that guys, uh, there's really key nuggets in there, right? Self-awareness first and foremost. Like, it, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses, right? Uh, take inventory of those yeah. things, right? Write them down. Mm -hmm. And then when you approach people, you know what you're good at and what you're not good at. Right. Please don't say you're good at something you're not good at, yeah. right? If you don't know how to do something, don't know how to do it. Right. Uh, there, is, there is so much value in honesty. I can't tell you. If you want to see how you can go from maybe in, in status in somebody's mind from here to here, mm -hmm. Honesty is the fastest elevator up. No, like there is no lie there. I'm, I'm telling you, please, please, please. What makes people lie is defensiveness. What makes people lie is fear, right? So one of the things when I first met Vincent as well, because you know this guy is a high profile person. Um, he was doing, he had a, a house in a neighborhood that I had just started purchasing in. Um, my sister and my family and I, we all ended up moving up into this neighborhood and you know, we went to an open house that Vincent had networking, right? Mm -hmm. um, Vincent shows us the house. Immediately, we see it's a retail home, mm -hmm. retail ready. Mm -hmm. uh, he had just priced it well. Here was the thing. So he was, uh, I remember you were on kind of on a busier corner, mm -hmm. um, may, I think, and, and you were priced well enough for it so that it could have been closer to a wholesale deal. Mm -hmm. but, but so he would priced his remodel really well. But as soon as we walked in, we were like, oh, this house is too nice. Mm -hmm. 
And right away, rather than pretending like, oh yeah, we're, we might buy this house and be like, you know, the fake house hunter people. Mm. We just was straight up like, oh, this is house, this house yeah. is really nice. You know, I don't think this is for us. We just bought one on Angela that was like, you know, a guy smoked in there forever. And, um, you know, this, we're not going to align on this. And, you know, he showed us the house anyways and was like, so tell me a little bit more about what you do. Like, what are you looking for? And I'm like, well, we're looking for the dirty stuff. And he's like, well, I like it dirty too. You know, and then we both realized like, hey, we like, we like houses that require work, something we can force appreciation on. And such so begins this relationship, right? And uh, I think the honesty, the self-awareness there was key, 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 key. Second, from his perspective, um, again, honesty, self-awareness, and then just having the capacity to let go. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm sending Vincent a deal and I have, the, I have an idea of like what this thing is and Vincent has an idea of what the value is mm -hmm. and we don't match, mm -hmm. uh, what happens a lot of times in this business is people begin aggressive. They, they try to force feed or try to force an opportunity or force a deal down somebody's throat. Mm -hmm. And it is the most repelling energy, I think, that you can ever have when you are trying to do desperately to yeah. make somebody, you know, see something the way that mm -hmm. you see it versus the way they see it because perspective is so individual and subjective, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I think I want to expand on that a little bit. How important is that for you? Yeah, whenever I get a sense uh, from a wholesaler that their one and only focus is money, when I get a sense that they're overvaluing not only, you know, the resale on, on the front side, or resale, I should say, you know, the sell to a third party or a second party or, or uh, you know, to an investor, uh, you can sift that out really, really fast. So I start to question integrity. I start to question their honesty. When they give me an ARV that is so whacked out, yeah. I, I just, I know that I can't trust you. Right. Um, and so from the beginning, uh, if I see the, the price, e even out the gates, is, is so off based on the current condition, um, it puts me in a defensive posture like, mm, I know someone, Jamil wouldn't do that. Right. Or I know, you know, anyone at Keegley now wouldn't do that. Um, and so that level of initial uh, transparency and trust is good. Or, you know, what happens sometimes is that, you know, I'll go back and forth. I'm not seeing this value. Um, and then they'll expose to me, uh, you know, well, I, you know, I, I put 30 grand on this, you know, Three hundred thousand dollar house. Like, what are you doing? Like, right, right. Thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Like, right. No, this is. Yeah. And I remember one time you told me, I don't know what house it was on, but it it was a, a great deal. Maybe you acquired it really, really well. And I remember you having a reaction like, I'm not going to put this amount of money on a wire. I want everybody to make money. If yeah. I take too much here, then that's really going to screw up. You know what's coming down the road. And that right. impacted me. And that was a big yeah. deal because even I've done my own wholesale deals. And right. You know, well, gosh, I could probably get away with putting X on it, but but why would I? That that right. messes everybody up. Exactly. So, so all those things, you know, continue to happen, which instilled that trust. Write sure. them nuggets <laughs> down, guys. Write them nuggets down. Look, you're not going to hit a grand slam out the gate. You may only hit a grand slam once a year. You might not even hit a grand slam once a year. It might take you, you know, a longer than longer than that. But the key to this business is singles, doubles, relationships, and continuing things on, right? understanding the win-win mentality that, look, first and foremost, if I send a deal to Vincent and I'm making 10,000 bucks, right? Well, he send, sends it to his client. He's going to make a little bit of money. He's, he cares about what that client is going to be able to exit at because that's the relationship that he's worried about. That's a relationship that is long-term for him, right? And so if I'm not thinking about not only Vincent, but the person on the other side of Vincent, I mean, that is, that's how, that's how, broad you've got to take your awareness sometimes especially when you're working with agents right because they are in just like you as a wholesaler we are all in the service provider industry we're providing services to people that are in this in this business if you're not fixing and flipping you're in the service provider industry now if you're fixing and flipping you might be on the receiving end of the service which is a totally different situation and it's not that we can't wear multiple hats but know the hat you're wearing at the time you're wearing it is very 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 important touch on the open house did you meet him at the open house yeah oh, you yeah met him at an open house. yes i've never heard you talk about that like telling people to go to open houses yeah so you know interesting interestingly enough um you know i don't necessarily tell people go to an open house and, and communicate but look when you're in the neighborhood you're passing by and signs are saying open house mm -hmm. well heck if i have an opportunity to pull over and come in and shake the hand of somebody and say hi nice to meet you mm -hmm. um do it right like you're there i mean the laziness stops you 
right? I'm not ever going to say to you, hey, go find all the open houses and make friends with all the buyer's agents in there. And very rarely does, a, does an agent of Vincent's caliber sit his own open house. This was a serendipitous situation, right? Um, I mean, when's the last time well, you sat in an open well, house? Pr- back, back then. I mean, back in the day was different. You know, I'm, okay. I'm building my yeah, own okay. business. But yeah, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. So it was, it was an interesting, it was an interesting, you know, uh, run in, right? Mm-hmm. Because again, it was his own deal. He had flipped it. He had, was the listing agent. And so he was showing it. And I, I think that as part of his investment strategy, him being the guy in the seat was what was necessary. Uh, but then also after that, Rahima and I just went in there and, and, and had a conversation. We were like, look, what's, what's, what's up? This is the one we bought down the road. And I don't remember if you even followed us to that or not. No, but no um, I think we like decided, oh, we like each other there and then exchange information. And then that just turned into a snowballing relationship, right? It became, it became a thing where, you know, again, we just sat on so many different sides of the, of the table, seller, buyer, buyer, seller, uh, it, or uh, a buyer, seller, whatever that was, it happened in so many different capacities. Uh, and this is another thing I want to remind everybody of is don't put people in a box, right? We have re- right here with us a real estate agent, broker, investor, wholesaler. Have you heard him say all of these things that he's done? So imagine this, right? You're sitting here in your little box thinking real estate agents don't like wholesalers. Yet, here we have a broker, agent, investor, wholesaler, all in one. How important is it for you uh, as, a, as a business person to have the flexibility to, yeah. to like go and go through all of those different lines and, and sort of play in all of it? Man, well, it, it really comes down to how well I want to serve my clients. I mean, at the end of the day, that, that is what um, inspires me to, to move because I have, you know, fortunately, however long, 15, 17 years or whatever of doing this, I have a broad range of clients with very different needs. And so these experiences allow me to, yeah, holistically serve clients in a way to where they know no matter what happens, what aspect. I mean, how many times, this probably is true for so many agents that have clients who have one right now. They're taking care of an elderly parent. Well, it's actually not even a parent. Power of attorney. They just call me. We, we can't list this house. We can't do anything with it. Yeah. Well, they call me. Right. Well, my experience in this world helps me to serve that family. And because that's the best solution at that, that time. That's right. That's right. It's and as your duty, yep. you know that that's how that's you right. do it. So I give all my clients a couple different things based on their needs. Do they, you know, want to hit the market? Do they want to go through the, the listing prep? Do they want to kind of go after what the market is suggesting? Does it need to be super fast? Does it need to be stress-free? Are you willing to leave some money on the table because you need a, a quicker exit strategy? Whatever it is. But so many times... Um, the client will say, I need this sold fast, I need it for cash, I need it stress-free. Well, if I didn't have relationships with wholesalers that I could trust, I wouldn't be able to serve that client. And so part of my strategy as an agent and a broker and really just strategy to serve people is to be able to have solutions for them no matter what their situation is. Wow, real estate agents take note. This is, so we've been talking about wholesalers now. There's a lot of real estate agents that follow me and listen to the content that I provide. Um, take note of that, right? Have tools, have different tools in your tool belt. Be able to service the client that isn't going to be able to have listing, a listing prep situation. Be able to make repairs. It's not going to allow people to traipse through the house for showings. Like These things are important to people. And people will trade potential equity for a stress-free and, 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 and quick, right? Remember, potential equity, right? Because the equity may not be there until the risk is taken. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing you want to remember and you want to remind your clients that, look, you know, everything that you're, whatever way you turn, whichever way you turn here, um, I have the best solution for you. And, and one of those pockets and one of those solutions, a trusted wholesaler is the best solution, mm-hmm. right? And so for all of these agents that feel like when they sell to a wholesaler, they do business with a the wholesaler, they've left money on the table of that, or that they've somehow disserved their client, mm-hmm. How do you get around that limiting belief? Well, you got to be honest and gentle and real with clients to, especially knowing that there's a chance when you get down to the close date, they see a settlement statement with two or three different people getting paid yep. at, at dollar amounts that they think, oh shoot, well, I could have got that. I just left 15 grand on the table or, right. or 10 grand on the table. Um, so it's building everything from a foundation of trust, honestly. Like if we take a client down the road, I have a level of trust that I've spent years building with all my clients to know that this is a solution, here's the transparency, here's what you're gonna see, here's what the opportunity is if you do take this route. If you don't, 
you're going to take a risk, you're going to have some more stress. That might be worth X amount of dollars, but you make that decision. True. Just know that if we go here, this is what it's gonna be and it's gonna solve for this. I mean, that's it, that's it. As transparent, I mean, trying to make something into something that it's not, including a home. This is what I tell some investors when they go remodel, like, well, I'm gonna do this. Why would you do that? That has no market value. Don't do that. Yeah. The house isn't. Same with, with clients, um, you know, I'm not gonna, uh, suggest or create a perception of a reality that's just not true. And if they choose not to use me, that, that's fine. There's so much freedom uh, in being honest. <laughs> it sounds, right. you it sounds terrible, right? Yeah, no, but it's, you, it's you sleep at night, yeah, you know, and it's like yeah. maybe this is not the client for yeah, me. That's right. right? Yeah, yeah, and and that getting to a point in my career of feeling confident enough to uh, walk away from clients um, because I've. I've gotten to a point where if I feel like I'm constantly trying to convince my client to trust me, it's just, which they should have trust, but I'm just at a point where uh, I'm not willing to go to certain lengths to convince somebody if I'm always trying to convince you, like, hey, this is just not gonna work out. Um, and it's great, um, you know, we shake hands and go our separate ways. Beauty of it is that a, that doesn't happen almost never. Right. Um, and so it's been a successful journey for me to go down that road and it's been great. Love it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of a detour here mm -hmm. because as I said, I do have a lot of real estate agents that follow me that may or may not have businesses yeah. that are built as mm -hmm. robust as you and have the mm -hmm. longevity that you have. Mm -hmm. What are some like a handful of nuggets that you can give to a new agent that may be trying mm -hmm. to build their book of business mm -hmm. to create relationships? You know, where do you go to mm -hmm. find them? What's your lead yeah. generation source? Yeah. How do you, how do yeah. you prospect? Yeah. Well, here is where it gets a little different for me because I have agents, uh, young agents come to me, you know, quite frequently asking if I can start teaching them, you know, how to be a successful agent. So going back to knowing what you're good at and what you're not good at, um, that was a, a key turning point in, in my life and my business was recognizing that, hey, I am terrible at cold calling. I, I, I just, I don't want to do it and I'm not good at it. Right. Um, sitting at an open house trying to drum up business, I'm just not, I'm not great of a, a salesperson uh, to sell myself to somebody new that I've just met. I'm just not great at it. And so uh, removing that burden from me uh, and focusing on what I am good at, which I'm an executor. Um, my degree is in hotel restaurant management. And so I've been in restaurant world, I work for the Ritz Carlton, like service based. Um, focus is um, at the top of my list in terms of how I serve people. So um, I really trust that if I am serving my clients well today, then the future will be taken care of. So this mindset of um, everything I'm doing today is protecting future sales, meaning if I serve this client well, I already have them. And so in the future, that referral stands a much better chance of happening if I can serve them today, as opposed to me proactively trying to drum up business down the road. So when I tell young people, I'm only successful because I have a foundation of people that trust me uh, through organic ways of relationship building uh, that I'm able to build and snowball. And so- What are some I, of those organic ways? Well, um, I uh, sponsor a lot of charity events. Awesome. I put myself in uh, positions of proximity to potential clients to just build relationships. Um, I do I go to a lot of social functions. I just, you know, I'm pretty involved in uh, our church and small group and community and charity stuff. And anyway, so there's just a lot of organic interacting with people. And I never bring up real estate. Right until the one person asks, what do, what do I do? do? And then I'm talking about real estate for two hours. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it, it never stops. And so, you know, again, kind of this indirect- It's an attractive force. Well, yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, isn't it? It is, yeah. So People hate it when you walk around like, guess what I do, yeah. this is what I do, yeah. this is what I do, this is right. what I do. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's that indirect way of-, of, of Measuring. You take, yeah, you take care of people, that, that money can't be your focus. And, and I've been super blessed to, uh, go about it that way. But um, yeah, f outside of that, I mean, relationship versus transaction is key. And people say that stuff all the time, but you know, anybody can sit through a real estate class, classes and get their license. And anyone who's ever gotten their license, I'm sure have looked around at some of these people and just scratched their heads at how they get out of uh, their house in the morning, let alone having someone trust them with such a big purchase. And so the transaction, the mechanics of a real estate deal are pretty straightforward. But the, the relationship, the, the talent that I would say um, agents earn is being able to um, emotionally and psycho psychologically being able to handle and care for a client's well-being 
in the space of making these purchases or making these decisions. I don't know how many times people have just asked me, um, you know, to speak into certain parts of their life, real estate or not, because they have a level of trust at my counsel and advice. Um, and, that, and that's it. So I focus on that more than anything. Um, I feel like every transaction I've ever done, I've put money into from a you know, commission standpoint. That's a whole other conversation, how agents process that and how deals get done. Um, but again, it's, it's really just focusing on the here and now, the clients that I do have, and just trust that that referral network will snowball. 99% of my deals are, are referrals. Wow. And so there you go. Not a dime spent on marketing, no. not a cold call made. Yeah relationships, relationships, referrals, referrals. Uh, it just so happens that when you do focus that way, you become one of the most successful real estate agents in the, in, the country, in the country, and especially in the market. When you focus on that exact same thing in wholesale, you become one of the most successful wholesalers in the country or, and in this market. Uh, see the alignment here, guys? The, the, things don't change, right? From industry to industry, from place to place, it's always foundational. It's always foundational. Relationships, relationships, relationships. Get out there and play, have some fun. Let's, let's speak to that for a moment because you do play. You go to charity events, yep. you have fun. I've seen you with your family. I see how present you can be. I, like, I love watching you on Instagram and seeing you at lunch, you know, enjoying uh, brunch after church on Sunday and just like seeing that and seeing the commune that you have with the people that are around you. Um, how important is it to put play into your day? No, oh, it, it's, it's huge. It's everything. I mean, it's the, the reason you know, why you try to achieve a certain level of, of success for your family. And, um, but it hasn't been, you know, probably the last five years have really been intentional about building some margin uh, into my life. Um, my kids are getting older and uh, I don't want to look back and, and, you know, regret missing so much stuff. So the beauty about being a real estate agent is that you can do real estate from anywhere. Um, but that's also the biggest curse, man. Goodness gracious. Um, you know, I find myself always doing work or, or putting deals together or negotiating something no matter where I'm at, which is great in its context, but it's also um, a killer sometimes. So, um, yeah, I have a, a licensed assistant uh, that helps. I intentionally have built my brokerage uh, not to have a 20-person a, a team built out. Uh, we're not built or set up for volume. Um, we're really set up to really specifically just focus on uh, this relationship and I have no desire to scale it to a level to where I feel my clients don't receive the level of service that I feel is appropriate um, because there's only so much of me um, and so yeah building in the the time to clear uh, you know enough margin for a Sunday to enjoy my family trying to say no to I can't do that showing right now because it's at four o'clock on a Sunday it's just not gonna happen so I've gotten more confident in uh, serving my client. And the reality is you think your client, you're going to lose clients by, by no. maintaining it. And that's yeah. just, it just reinforces the value system that you have as to, and reinforces why they hired you. It's, it's Man, really that's crazy. such a gold nugget. You guys, are, you guys are throwing your relationships down the toilet or you're running away from your house in a crisis or you're leaving your children and your, your spouses to feel abandoned because you went and chased a deal when things were necessarily, you or you were needed at home. Right. And so, you know, I, I've uh, I really respect that about you, man. It's not that is not an easy thing to do, especially when you're self-employed and, you know, you are trying to build a business and create opportunities. There is something magical about where you value yourself, where you value your time and where you value the opportunity to work with you. Right. That's a thing. You got to think about that. Like, what is it? What is the opportunity to work with me like and how do I value myself? And and if you have not yet taken inventory or perhaps written down, you know, what are the things that I'm most capable at? What are the things that I value about myself the most? Where does my integrity lie? Where does my heart lie? And, and how does that propel me in the business that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Then you haven't taken inventory into your gifts. And if you haven't taken inventory into your gifts, then how are you going to open those gifts up and show, share other people how incredible you are? Uh, Vincent, yep. I love you, bro. Oh, man, I love you back. Bro. You are yeah. one of my favorite people, and I needed to have you um, be here. I want everybody who I know and that's watching this to follow Vincent and to find a way to do business with him, find a way to emulate, find a way to to work in, in whatever that is. If that means finding him an opportunity, if that means maybe you've got a client that's got a, 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 a maybe you've got a client that might want to buy one of the luxury houses he's got listed, whatever that is, mm -hmm. connect the dots, connect with Vincent. What's the best way to do that? 
Uh, yeah, you texted me is uh, probably the, the simplest, fastest way. Um, and then, yeah, Instagram, uh, probably the next best. Emails, I can't even, I don't know when I've looked at an email. Okay, I don't yeah. look at emails much either. Are you, are you comfortable giving your number up? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 602-684-9355 is my cell. Uh, Instagram, Vincent.Clark24 is my IG handle, and uh, that'll do it. So. Guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning yeah. in. Yeah. And remember, right? Limits, beliefs, mm. they, 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 they really shape who you mm. are and what you will and won't do in your day, mm. right? So if you're finding yourself in a roadblock, it's pretty much uh, guaranteed that that roadblock is an invisible mm. barrier. Figure your way out around it, because mm. as soon as you do, you're on the other side. Mm. And what's on the other side could be the biggest opportunity of your life. Mm. It's mm. always been an opportunity to work with you, Vincent. I love you, wow. God bless you guys. And until the next time, we'll see you. Thanks for watching another one of my YouTube videos. Now it's your turn to go out and take some action. But before you do, like and subscribe to my channel because the law of reciprocity means you owe me. B